just might be the toughest position to play in football, cornerback, especially in a passing league like the Pac-12. Let's run down the top five coming up in 2015. Uh, Mark Rogers TV joined by got Kalen Jones of House of Sparky on the SB Nation platform for Arizona State Athletics, Matt Lozano from the LA Sports Hub, and also Jack Fullman from Pacific Take. So, Kalen, let's start with you. I know you've got a loaded defensive backfield there at Arizona State. You're really well stocked on defense, especially on the back end. Uh, run down your top five for us. Well, my top five in the conference, Mark, um, I'm going to start out at my number five. I know that they struggled a lot last season in terms of record, but he was a lone bright spot on that defensive side of the ball. He didn't record too many interceptions, but he had 11 passes defended, and he was also named the Phil Steele's all Pac-12 second team heading into this season. So I think that he can end up being, again, another big uh, part of that Colorado defense as they look to improve. My number four guy, I'm trying not to be a homer, but Lloyd Carrington out of Arizona State, Todd Graham speaks extremely highly of him, calls him arguably the most intelligent corner that he's ever coached during his time, and not only just at ASU, but in Tulsa, just his, his full out career as well. But this is a guy who plays big on big time stages against Notre Dame, uh, ended up being player of the week after he had a pick six. Uh, he also made a few other outstanding defensive plays against USC was involved on a few key tackles that ended up saving the game. I believe he tripped the uh, Demorius Allen uh, or Buck Allen during one of his big runs that would have ended up putting the game away for USC. But Lloyd Carrington, I think he's going to improve and continue to build upon the draft stock that he's continued to build over his last two seasons. I think that he jumps into that top five as well. My top three is a little tricky. Um, I have two guys from USC, my number three guy, and you guys are probably going to cheer me out for it, but it's Adoree Jackson. Out of USC, I know that he is a three-way player, and I know that he's a playmaker both on the offensive side and in special teams, and you can argue that he's going to be a Heisman candidate um, playing at receiver or punt returner. But I think uh, at the NFL, similar to how Charles Woodson was at Michigan, I think he's going to ultimately be around at the cornerback position than anything else. I think he's a playmaker on that side of the ball. I think he'll end up starting. Um, my number two guy is Fabian Moreau out of UCLA. And I think that this is the guy who gave Jalen Strong a ton of fits, regardless of the stats that he put up. This is a guy who does extremely good at battling for the ball in the air. Um, he has shut down quarter potential. And I think that this is, in the absence of Priest Willis, I don't think UCLA is going to struggle too much because they have a guy like Moreau on the right side of the ball who's going to be able to line up against the team's best receiver day in and day out and shut them down. Um, and my top guy is going to be Kevon Seymour out of USC. He's going to be a third-year starter, had 13 passes defended last year. Um, is also pretty good in the running game. Ended up nearly recording 50 tackles with 49. But to me, I think the top two between Moreau and, and Seymour is essentially interchangeable. But that's going to be my top five, at least for the Pac-12. All right, it's a good-looking list, but we've got two to go. we got Jack Fullman from Pacific Takes. Uh, what's your take on the top five at uh, cornerback, Jack? Not a great year for cornerback, and uh, at least going into the season, in my personal opinion, the Pac-12, but uh, there's some, definitely some talent there. Uh, Starting with number five, uh, Kevon Seymour from uh, USC. He's a veteran, a senior. He's been in the backfield for a while, and uh, nothing too like, flashy about him, in my opinion, but he's just a solid, really good cover corner. Uh, number four is a guy who... Maybe a ton of people don't know about yet. He's a Sidney Jones. He's a sophomore at Washington. Uh, Buda Baker uh, is kind of the young defensive back at Washington that seems to get most of the buzz. But Sidney Jones, watching that team uh, game in the gate out last year, it looks like the next uh, really good cover corner to come out of Washington. He's long and uh, plays against the ball really well. Uh, number three, I uh, have Adoree Jackson, a uh, guy who I think we're all going to become very familiar with in the next couple of years. He's just an outrageous athlete, as, you, uh, as we all know. He plays uh, offense, and he returns uh, kicks and punts, and he's really good at that. So uh, I think he brings that like unreal athleticism to the corner, and that, that just goes a long way. Uh, number two, uh, Vivian Moreau, uh, really good physical corner from UCLA. Uh, I think he was second of last year. Uh, another guy who I don't think, you know, he's not has like jump, uh, jump off the page uh, tangible or anything, but just is a 
a very good physical corner with great fun. Another UCLA guy, uh, Ishmael Adams, a small, outrageous speed who could, uh, he had two interceptions and he took them both to the house. So he has that kind of speed to make an interception and make a play, and he's also a good return man. And that really shows. I think he was a uh, second team All-Pac-12 last year as well as a corner. All right, Jack. So if I've got this straight, you got Ishmael Adams at number one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kalen didn't have Ishmael Adams, didn't have him on your top five, right? <laughs> no, I did not. Just checking here. I'm, but I'm I do agree with, with Jack that he is the. Then we got uh, Kevon yeah. Seymour, <laughs> uh, num number one for Kalen. Barely made the top five, number five for Jack. So I'm just just keeping score here, and I'm going to be interested once we pitch it to Matt here. Uh, Matt, who you've got in the top five here? Okay, well, I've got a lot of the same guys as these guys. Uh, I've got number five. I'm going to put Kevon Seymour out of USC. I'll be the first to admit I might be a little bit of a USC homer. He's a really solid player, though. Uh, in this day and age where we see a lot of you know, bubble screens and that type of thing in the college football offenses, he does an excellent job of stopping a play before it really gets started. And I agree with uh, what was said earlier. I don't think stats always um, make or break your argument as far as cornerbacks go. Uh, obviously, you want to see you know, better stats, but one of the best stats you can have at corner is the fact that nobody throws that way. Uh, that's kind of the thing Kevon Seymour's got going for him right now. Uh, he had 49 tackles last year, just the one interception, but he's a really solid player. Uh, number actually, four, man, I got not to interrupt you, but I actually think Kalen's the USC homer because he's got uh, Seymour at number one. So anyway, <laughs> keep, keep going there, man, with your top five. Number four. No worries. I'll give. Uh, I'll reluctantly give the Bruins a little bit of love here. I got Fabian Morrow. Uh, he's a senior out of UCLA. Great ball skills. He's really, I would say, probably the best just pure uh, corner in this group, uh, besides one other guy who's also a Bruin. Um, he had 53 tackles last year. He's a really solid player. UCLA is going to have one heck of a defensive, back, uh, defensive backfield. Uh, number three, I got Lloyd Carrington. I think this might be the most underrated guy uh, in the Pac-12 defensively. Uh, this guy's ball skills are just incredible. He had 58 tackles last year. Uh, one of the more memorable plays uh, when ASU played Notre Dame last year, he had the pick six that kind of sealed the deal uh, in the fourth quarter there. If you watch him play, he's the definition of a ball hawking corner. Uh, you'll see him make reads on plays that you can tell he's watching his film because he breaks on the ball before it's thrown sometimes. Uh, Lloyd Carrington, look out for him this year. I think that's going to be one of the bigger names, especially come draft day. Uh, you're talking about a top five corner in this year's draft class. Uh, number two, I'll, I'll call him 1A and 1B. I'll go with the Dory Jackson at number two. Uh, for obvious reasons. He didn't have an interception last year, but what he did have was a knack for making spectacular play after play. Uh, he plays offense, defense, and one of the things that you're not going to hear a lot, but last year uh, they put him as a true freshman. Uh, he was supposed to lock up Ty Montgomery against Stanford. Ty Montgomery had one of his worst games of the season uh, with the Dory Jackson all over, and that was only the third game of the season when they played Stanford. So, uh, and he did a good job against Jalen Strong for about the first half. Uh, he played offense. He got hurt in that ASU game. And we all know what happened at the end of the ASU game last year. Uh, Jalen Strong tore him apart uh, once the Dory Jackson was no longer on and they didn't have anyone to cover him. And uh, last but not least, I got Ishmael Adams. He's number one in my book. Uh, the most pure corner uh, we're going to see this year. He's, six, he's not quite six feet tall, and he plays uh, bigger than he is. Uh, he's an awesome cover corner, as mentioned earlier. Two pick sixes last year, 40 tackles. Nobody wants to play that play this year. I, I think one of the things that come to light here, gentlemen, is that if you look at uh, Jim Morris' recruiting classes going back about two or three years, you see where he really stocked up uh, in the defensive backfield and where he was probably the most impressive in his recruiting classes uh, going back again two or three years. So uh, we got Jack Fullman, Pacific Takes, Kalen Jones of House of Sparky, Matt Lozano of the LA Sports Hub breaking down the top five cornerbacks in the Pac-12. Gentlemen, appreciate the insight. You bet. Thank you.